So Prince Harry rang up Prince William and said, let's call a truce, bro. Well, that's according to reports. But whether that's true or not, it is interesting that there is a general vibe out there on YouTube land that is saying that if Harry actually divorces Meghan, that that somehow gives him a get out of jail free card, that that sort of makes it able for him to come home to the warm embrace of his family once more. Well, I disagree with that and I disagree with that because I have some material to share with you and once I share it with you, I want to hear what you think. I want to hear your thoughts down below. So all this material comes from multiple sources, from Robert Lacey's book Battle of Brothers to Tina Brown's Palace Papers to Angela Levin's book on Harry to even Harry's own book, Spare. And what does it tell us? Well, it tells us that the grievance that he had against the institution and the royal family was already there prior to meeting Meghan. That his resentment against the media and media intrusion and his paranoia about that existed well before Meghan. And how do we know that? Because all the reports and all the stories about his relationship with Cressida shows us that. So let's go back to Cressida's time and find out how many of these resentments and views Harry held way before meeting Meghan. And I think you will actually be really surprised because I was. So in Palace Papers, Tina Brown points out that there was general agreement about Cressida, that she had the makings of a perfect partner for Harry who was madly in love with her. And I'm just going to read this part. As a guest at Sandringham for shooting weekends, Cressida blended easily with Harry's friends. So that's a change. (laughs) And she passed the Africa test on a successful vacation. So there's the old take them off to Africa and see how they do. It seems that Prince Harry likes to audition in Africa. Now what's interesting in the past papers is Tina Brown points out that Harry was increasingly venting about his brother and his father while he was going out with Cressida. And it used to make her feel really, really uncomfortable because they shared friendship groups. And I presume that she actually really liked William and Catherine. But it says quite plainly that he was often venting about William and pouring out resentments about Charles. So he had all these sort of disgruntled ideas and resentments and feelings like he was less and not being treated well way before Meghan. This was a really telling paragraph. More challenging for all was Harry's ever-boiling paranoia about the press. Now, when we think about it, a lot of the angst and hardship and horror has been... (laughs) has actually come from that ever-boiling paranoia about the press. Now, I will just cut in here and say, don't think I'm not aware of why he would be paranoid. Don't think I'm not aware that the that the man has been damaged and hurt. And I know when I say that, that some people call me out and say, well, I'm sick of hearing excuses for Harry. I don't say it as an excuse. I say it as an awareness that we all know he hates the press, he distrusts the press. But unfortunately with Megan, I think that that feeling has become heightened. But we can see that the paranoia about the press was clearly there through his few years dating Cressida. So it says here that Cressida actually understood, like I just said, that she understood the historical reasons why he hated journalists. I think we all understand but believed that he should, and I think this is key, like William, come to terms with his royal fame. So that's a really valid point because we can see now that he's not a child anymore. He's in his 30s. He's heading towards middle age even through these years. And he's really popular and he's enjoying increased responsibility. He's got the full backing of the institution behind him. He's got the full backing and support of his family. Um, They're showing him love and care and he's enjoying a lot of good things. A lot of things are going right in his life. So Chris 
Lassiter is making the point that maybe now might be the time to take a mature approach and actually move on and embrace his role. And it then goes on to say that they didn't often have very successful dates, poor Cressida, because whenever they tried to go anywhere because of Harry's paranoia about the press, he would, if they went to the theatre, he would suddenly leave an interval and make a fuss. And, and it was said that she was either being ignored or dragged along the street and being yelled at because he was having some sort of meltdown or hissy fit. Also, it is said that during St. Valentine's Day when they were going out, that they were heading off to the restaurant. And in the way on the car, Harry got word that there was one photographer, one, just waiting outside the restaurant they were going to. Now, in Kensington, there's lots of lovely posh restaurants and there are photographers that would take their chances on St. Valentine's Day because there's a good chance that a famous couple might come along and decide to have dinner at that particular restaurant. So all he had to do was park the car, you know, have their bodyguards guiding them, walk past the one photographer with a lovely smile and go in and enjoy his dinner with Cressida. But he had to chuck a big dramatic hissy fit, did a big U-turn in the middle of the street and, and dashed back to Notcot, gunning the engine, all poopy, and they had to get takeaway pizza. And her friends actually say that by this stage, she's starting to think, hmm, this is a little bit of a problem. So that is why I think Harry pretty much already had a lot of the resentments that he has displayed so publicly since he met Meghan. He already resented William. He already resented his father. He already resented the institution. He resented his role within it. And he really resented the press. And that is why I think he actually made a decision when he met Meghan. I think he knew exactly what he was getting into And I think he knew exactly the effect their relationship was going to have on everything. And I think he quite enjoyed deploying his latest weapon. I always think that the Markle family, in particular Meghan Markle, was like releasing the Kraken, you know, like in Clash of Titans, release the Kraken, because that's what it feels like to me. The Markles are the Kraken, and Meghan Markle is the chief Kraken, and Prince Harry pretty much made a decision that he was going to bring that to bear upon the institution and upon the royal family, because let's face it, If the reason why the relationship with Cressida was so damaged was because of all these factors, well, then why would you go for an actress for take two? I mean, why would you agree to meet an actress for a blind date? I mean, Cressida was an actress and a model and she enjoyed press attention. Harry hated it. He blamed press attention for why they broke up and for all their difficulties when in actual fact, it sounds to me like they broke up because he was a bit of a dick. But anyway, (laughs) moving on. So he's blaming it on all that, right? Because he never takes responsibility for anything, as we know. So why would you then go for the same thing but amplified? Why would you go for an actress? Why would you go for a divorcee? Because that's going to attract more attention. Why would you go for a girl with a very big past? Why would you go for any of those things if you were serious about the fact that press attention destroyed your relationships? So my thinking is that the royal family should give him a very wide berth either with Megan or without Megan. I think if they do end up breaking up, I don't think that's a ticket back in. I think they would be crazy because he is now a middle-aged man. And when has he shown any capability to be discreet or to think unemotionally or to accept consequences or to think before he acts or to even think the right way about the royal family and the institution? Let me know down below what you think. Can't wait to hear it. And I'll see you again really soon. Don't like, don't subscribe. But if you want to share this video, I would appreciate it. See you next time. Bye.